clean the screen is now. All I have is my map. Right down there. Okay. Now it is time to meet Messer Machiavelli in front of the uh, Mausoleo de Augusto. He's getting away! Faster! Faster! Now you die! Uh oh. Okay. If you shoot me, don't you dare fucking shoot me! Thank you. Yep. 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 Ow. Where is he? There he is. Hello, Niccolo, my birthday boy. Birthday buddy is what I meant to say, but yeah. Hello. Ezio, what a surprise to see you here. I thought you had sent for me. Never. News of the Villa attack has spread across the city. We were certain that you were dead. Not, not yet. yet. I am still, still very, very much, much alive. alive. <laughs> the Borgia must not discover that you escaped them. Yeah, well. Accompany Machiavelli through Rome, encountering dangers along the way. Follow the Borgia captain into the... Oh, okay, yeah. See, now that one has to challenge. So I think I'm going to do that one. I might. Might not. I'll try. But if I fail, either way it works, Follow right? me. <laughs> Take care not to draw any undue attention. I always when do. do. I ever. When do I ever? Fuck. <laughs> okay. If you were anyone, this is what I was talking about. If you were anyone of importance in Rome and died between 24 BCE and 98 CE, you were buried in here. Occupied by the Colonna family in the Middle Ages, the Mazzolea was fortified and converted into part of the Castel Sant'Angelo. Yes, they lived with dead people. <laughs> well, I mean, everyone in Paris did as well. Millions of dead bodies down in the catacombs. Which is creepy to think about, but yeah. That's movie as above, so below. Fuck that. Not watching that. Scary stuff. After, humili after the humiliating defeat of the Commune of Rome in 1167, the Colonna family was disgraced, banished from the city, and their fortification was dismantled. Later, the family was allowed back into Rome and spent the duration of the Renaissance feuding with the rival Orsini family. If this teaches us anything, it's that if you want to get rid of someone, hang them, because banishment is far too temporary. <laughs> right. All right, so right there. Anyone of importance between those two years is buried right there. I wish they'd given us some examples. Might have to look that up later. Mausoleo de Augusto. I'm gonna look that up later on my own time. Maybe I'll add some prompts in the video. Figure out, give you some examples of people who are buried in there. Or not. You would be wise to purchase missing equipment. I guess we'll find out later. You will not live long in Roma without supplies. <laughs> you don't know me very well. I have my blade. And the guards have their guns, courtesy of the Borgia. Fortunately, I can help you. Grazie. Grazie. While you're in my debt, perhaps you will listen to reason. As soon as I hear some, I will let you know. <laughs> so, such philosophical type banter between these two men. It's like uh, when Littlefinger and Lord Varys always talked back and forth. Don't think that's happening anymore, but duh. Um, okay, I'm buying some new spalders. Fancy shoulder pads. And I'm going to buy a stiletto dagger. Alright. I have a knife, and I'm going to use it! Yay! Thank you! Then, now you can survive the journey back to Firenze. Perhaps. Not going to Firenze. But I'm not going to Firenze. Oh. There will be no peace until we rise up against the entire Borgia family and the Templars who serve them. I do not recall such brave talk at Monteregion. Yeah, well, I learned my lesson. could I have lesson. known that they would find me so quickly, that they would kill Mario? Rodrigo surrounds himself with snakes and murderers. Even his daughter, Lucrezia, has been sharpened into one of his most artful weapons. Well, people pronounce this Lucretia, pales in comparison which is not to right. the man behind the villa attack. He is ambitious, ruthless, and cruel beyond imagining. The laws of men mean nothing to him. He murdered his own brother to take power. He knows neither danger nor fatigue. Those who do not fall by his sword clamor to join his ranks. The powerful Orsini and Colonna families have been brought to kneel at his feet, and the King of France stands at his side. Give, Give me his name. name. Cesare, head of the papal army. Cesare What does he intend to do with his power? What drives the man? What? That I still do not know. But Ezio, Cesare has set his sights on all of Italia. 
and at this rate he will have it. Is that admiration I hear in your voice? He knows how to exercise his will. A rare virtue in the world today. I'll give him credit for that, I suppose. I mean, the guy was a great military commander. He wasn't bad at what he did, but he was a very bad dude. Why am I hearing whispers all the time? Is that part of the audio track, or am I actually supposed to be nervous yet? The last game I played that had whispers in it, I had to pay attention, so excuse me if I'm a little tense. Alright, we've made it to the stables, which are closed, unfortunately, but so not, not for long. Horse? Roma is quite I forgot large. to put on my gauntlet! Hold As on. Cesare's conquests in Romagna continue to succeed, and the Borgia grow in power, they have taken desirable areas of the city for themselves. We cannot use the stables here. Oh, the will of the Borgia is law now? What are you implying, Ezio? I'm implying you're a pushover. You play dumb with me, Machiavelli. Do you have some kind of plan? I am improvising. improvising. In a second. Can we go get my gun? There we go. My Ezio Auditore Hidden Blade Gauntlet is on. It might be a little askew, but oh well. Alright, there we go. I have it on my wrist. Just like this. Check that out. It is beautiful. It's so beautiful, but okay. Here we go. Oh my god, this is clunky. Eh, eh, eh. Alright, let's do it. Nib. There we go. Alright, that's not too bad. Of course, keep your feet off the carpet in case you want to get your toes bitten off by ants. Alright, I have to throw the captain into the scaffolding to kill him. The scaffolding right there. Should I try that? Or... I mean, I've done that so many times already. And I'm sure all of you guys are fellow Assassin's Creed fans as well, so you've, you've played the games yourselves and you've done it all the time. You know what? I'm going to do it differently. I am going to use... Can I poison him? If I can sneak in... And poison him... Ow, oh, shit. That would be ideal. Oh, there's the captain, huh? Well, all right then. Um, Dev. Oh, <sighs> oh, fuck. Hurry! Catch this! You? Oh, they see me. Oh well. Oh god! Keep on him, boys. I'll handle Ow! You fucker. Keep on him, boys. I'll handle Fuck you! That's it. I give up. I messed up. <laughs> I was gonna try and distract them somehow. And, like, and get him, and get those guards to move away so I could run in there and get him with poison, but, no. I messed up. My bad. Either way, I got full sync, so fuck. Just because you kill a few guards does not mean the people will grant access to the stables. You are right. We need to send a signal. Wait here. I remember the last time I played through this part, I killed the captain and went straight up to the Borgia Tower to light it without realizing the game was requiring me to go back to Machiavelli. So I climbed all the way up there and then was like, oh, shit. And I had to climb all the way back down, go to the Machiavelli, and then climb all the way back up. It wasn't fun. Get down, now! Don't let him escape! Owie! Found him, there! I just decided I really don't fucking like you at fucking all! Alright, you know what? Just come to the... Okay, now, alright, alright, alright. Come here, fuck you! Don't scream Mordor at me, bitch. The eye of Sauron frowns upon you. Alright, here we go. <laughs> this is not your district anymore. I love that. It clip. seems the stable is now available for purchase. After you. After you. Okay. Accompany 
Machiavelli to the Campidoglio. Good guy. Campidoglio? I think that's how you say it. No freaking clue. Okay. Following you, Machiavelli. My voice broke so bad. Yeah. yeah, this reminds me. A lot of people were complaining that in the demo for Syndicate, when you're uh, giving chase on the, on the carriage, they were complaining how you could just completely run over civilians without any repercussions whatsoever. It's like, you could totally do that in every single Assassin's Creed game when you could ride a horse. Ever. And no one batted an eye then. Like, yeah, well, this is a full carriage, so it's not like just kind of getting hit by a horse and getting knocked over. You're getting run over by a carriage. Yeah, and okay, they want more realistic. I get it. Excel at opening wounds, Ezio. Shut up. I want to read about the Pantheon as well, but I want to finish my thought as well. If Ubisoft took your advice and made a more realistic game where if you ran over a bunch of civilians, you would probably get desynchronized if you killed at least three. That's like immediate desynchronization. It'd be nearly impossible to do any, like, carriage chase stuff if all you have to focus on is dodging civilians. And like, if they did that and released the game that way, you'd be bitching about that too. So why don't you just shut up, let the developers make their game, and not be a dick all the time. Alright? Anyway. The Pantheon. This architectural wonder still stands at the world's largest, as the largest, unreinforced concrete dome 2,000 years after being built. The opening at the dome center, known as an oculus, is the singular source of light for the immense chamber. Constructed in 126 CE by Marcus Agrippa as a temple to all of the ancient Roman gods, the Pantheon has since become a beacon of Christianity. The structure has been burned, rebuilt, robbed, modified, torn down, and renovated so many times, the interior contains a myriad of conflicting icons and symbols. Apparently, most gods had this building constructed in their honor. I, however, recommend worshipping at the modern-day espresso bar surrounding it. Yeah, just as so long as you're not the one making the coffee. I intend to heal their sickness, not treat its symptoms. Stop sparring with me. Fine, let us talk openly then. Rodrigo Borgia's death would not have solved anything. I am inclined to disagree. Look at this city, the center of Borgia and Templar rule. Killing one man will not change things. We need to take away the source of their power. Are you suggesting we appeal to the people? Why not? Maybe. Relying on the people is like building on the set. You are wrong. Our belief in humanity rests at the heart of the Assassin Brotherhood. Well, <laughs> he's kind of right. He must be from your inner circle. Go, get back what he has stolen. Yeah, just stand there. Give him a good head start. Not like it'll I fucking matter. I am meeting a contact there. Give me back my money! <laughs> I love that line. I don't know why, it's just funny. Come back here! Give me back my money! I just spat so Get much, you have no before idea. Before I regret sparing your life. Walk off, son. Yeah, run run into the corner. That's cool. Alright. He said he'd meet me at the Campidolio, so literally he just left without me. I'm back in like 20 seconds! And he left without me. You're an ass. Where's my horse? And apparently he took my horse as well. God, what a dick! Il Campidoglio. I want to read. The most famous of the seven hills of Rome, Il Campidoglio's ancient history yields layers of ruins steeped in mythology. That sounds right up my alley. Several important Roman temples were built atop the hill, including the Temple of Juno, uh, the Temple of Virtus, and the Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus Capitolinus. Well, goodness gracious. That's Jupiter, right? The other member of the first civilization? I mean, Virtus probably is, is one as well. But, um, Juno, Minerva, and Jupiter are known as the Capitoline Triad, which is, um, basically the leaders of the first civilization. So, Capitolinus makes me think it's the same Jupiter. Anyway, in the year 79, the hill was also home to Tabularium, the Tabularium, excuse me, the Empire's main archive. In the Middle Ages, it became the city's center of civic government just before receiving a facelift from Michelangelo. Ooh, ooh very cool. Il Campidoglio. Alrighty, he's right up here. All these ancient ruins. Hello, thanks for taking my horse, you ass. Did you liberate your money from our friend? I did. I did. A small victory. They are up. And in time, with work, we'll have a few dozen more. And in time, Cesare's gaze will return to us. And we'll be broken again. Now, where is my contact, Vinicio? He should have already intercepted the letter. Follow me. I believe we have to go to the Colosseum now. Pretty sure. 
Who's got mail? Rendezvous with Machiavelli's contacts and retrieve the letter he carries. Catch the board to courier in under one minute. Now that's challenging. I will go ahead and do that. Aha, we are going to the Coliseum. So I went all the way up here, and now I have to ride all the way back down. Lovely. So pushy. <laughs> Tempio di Vespasiano. What the hell is that? Standing at the western end of the Roman Forum between the Temple of Concordia and the Temple of Saturn, the Tempio was built to honor the Flavian dynasty, comprised of emperors Vespasian, Titus, and Domi Domitian, I think. Flavia, that's what Ezio ended up naming his daughter. As part of the deification process, I assume that means becoming a deity? I don't fucking know. Construction was ordered by Titus shortly after his father Vespasian's death in 79. Legend tells us Vespasian's last words were, Pity, I think I'm turning into a god. Which, incidentally, will also be my last words. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Who was that one? I think he was a serial killer or something that was being put to death. And his last words were, How's this for a headline? French fries. <laughs> Even in death, that twisted freak still had a uh, sense of Look humor. Alright. Oh, sorry, Machiavelli, I didn't mean to cut you off. This gauntlet is, like, it's already shipped on my wrist. Because it's, like, it's not comfortable to play video games with. I'm getting stabbed by the blade part there. Oh, man. Built by Emperor Domination in 82 CE to honor his dead brother Titus. Ah, oh, the Arco de Tito commemorates Titus's victory in the sack of Jerusalem. Oh. This arch became the inspiration for many arches to be erected thereafter, most notably the Arc de Triomphe de in Paris. Oh! I know that! As well as Constantine's arch. I don't know Constantine's arch, but I do know the Arc de Triomphe de Paris in Paris. I always say de Paris. My bad. Sorry. Arc de Triomphe. Triomphe. French. Fuck. <laughs> in Passat, masquerading as governor. The Pope is very clever to keep this place in business. It fools your friends, the people, quite easily. When did you become so cynical? I merely described... He's <laughs> Niccolo Machiavelli, it's you. Something you gotta get used to. may not be lost. The good news is that we have allies in the city. How oh. much longer this will last, however? Sorry! I want to read about the Colosseum. I mean, if anything, we're gonna read about the Colosseum, right? Constructed from 72 to 80 CE under Emperor Titus, the Colosseum held up to 50,000 spectators and is considered one of the greatest architectural achievements in Roman history. That's 10,000 less than the stadium that Trump gave that speech in. <laughs> anyway, the majority of the shows, be they gl gladiatorial, good lord, dramatic or otherwise, were privately funded by rich families to demonstrate their opulence, creating spectacles that were universally adored by the people of Rome. Unfortunately, a massive earthquake in 1349 caused a large-scale irreparable damage, irreparable damage, and the Colosseum was left to ruin. In the mid-16th century, which is before this, is it? Yes, it's before. We're in the early 16th century. Pope Sixtus V wished to make use of the remaining shell and resolved to convert the structure into a giant wool factory to provide employment for Rome's prostitutes. That's very true. Sadly, the Pope died before this brilliant idea could become a reality. That's 100% true. Very cool. Turn the gladiator stadium to steal official Vatican mayor. into a wool factory me, to raise you money for prostitutes. Mistake. Who are you working for, Ladro? I am working for no one. Then no one will care what we do to you. Why are you holding a mace up to his neck like that? Eh! What the hell are you saying? No! 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 I want... I want my throwing knives. Oh, nice. I will finish him off! Eh! Grazie. Where is it? In Nada. Uh, so you don't know what it is in Italian. Ezio, stop him. Oh, shit. Okay. Find me at the Terme. Oh, he went this way. Okay. Find him at the Terme something. Under a minute. Under a minute. Under a minute. Come here, you bitch. I will get you. Gotcha. Encoded Romulus letter, eh? Um, well, that makes a whole lot of sense. All right. That's right, fuck off. All right, I did it. Yay! I'm going the wrong way. All right, let's cut through the Coliseum this way. I don't know. I've already read it, as a matter of fact. Time is it? Okay. Oh, I've received new emails. I 
feel like I want to leave the Animus and read them, because I'll forget otherwise. But we were just there, so I won't do that just yet. The structure was built atop a section of Nero's ruined Golden Palace, and was poetically intended for use by the commoners. In 537, the siege of the Goths destroyed most of the Roman aqueducts, and the Terme de Traiano were subsequently abandoned due to the loss of their water supply. Another public works project gone terribly wrong, but I'm sure throwing a few Christians to the lines in the Colosseum made up for it. God damn, Sean. That's why I love the Animus database entries. Like, they're written by a sarcastic asshole. So, you know, and he knows his stuff, so he teaches you stuff, but he's also really sarcastic and funny about it. That's what really helped me get into history, because this game taught me history in a very entertaining way, and I loved it. Alright, Machiavelli said he'd be here. So let's... I think I entered from the wrong side, though. Fuck! So I'm gonna go ahead and run through the abandoned baths. And meet him over here. And pretend like I came in the other way. <laughs> okay. Crepia Lupo. I don't know what that means. Lupo is... Isn't Lupo wolf? Crepia Lupo. I don't know what that means. Howl of the wolf. No fucking idea. Deliver the letter to Machiavelli near the Terme de Traiano. I think we're in it right now. Don't lose any health. Yeah, this is gonna fucking suck. I didn't know wolves were native in Rome. Might have been off a little bit. That's so creepy. He's like, what the fuck? Make de fia! Alright, here we go. This is gonna suck. Oh. Oh. I can do it. No! I almost had it! Shit! Oh well, I got hit once. Fuck it. Oh god. Damn it! So close! Where did these murderers come from? There you go. There isn't much about the followers of Romulus in the history books, but from what I found, they were a pagan cult operating in several abandoned locations underneath Rome. The cult worshipped the mythological founder of the city of Rome, Romulus, who was supposedly raised by wolves. The followers believed that Romulus was part wolf and part man, which explains their retro wardrobe and bad table manners. These murderers come from. And the lack of knowledge of the English language, apparently. Or, I mean, Italian language, I guess, is where Rome. Okay, crepe e lupo. I was. So close! I got hit by one guy. God damn. Alright. Notice how I wasn't come from in here. I wasn't saying like anything during that part, because I really didn't want to get hit. Damn. Very close. Oh well. Alright, here we go. Let's go see where these guys operate, shall we? There we go. Jesus. Alright. Halls of Nero. Locate the shrine to Romulus. That looks like a very foreboding picture, doesn't it? <laughs> We're gonna die! <sighs> so this is what's left of his golden palace. Doesn't look very golden anymore, does it? Nero's golden palace. So go ahead and read about this. Perhaps, I mean, I'm reading a lot of these database entries, but I warned you guys ahead of time. I'm going to read all of these that interest me, okay? Because I'm a history freak. I like this stuff. So, sorry. You can skip ahead if you want to, but, I mean, I'm going to read them because I want to. Perhaps the best example of early Roman imperial machismo, Nero had this gaudy monstrosity built. It's a gaudy monstrosity. It's beautiful. Even in ruin. After the Great Fire of Rome. Thought to have been as big as 300 acres, this gilded and bejeweled palace, 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 Contained vineyards, pastures with flocks, groves, and a man-made lake. Wow. To top it off, Nero commissioned a 35-meter-tall bronze statue of himself to be placed just outside the main entrance, reassuring any doubters as to who exactly owned the building. The palace was known as a par party villa, considering there were over 300 rooms, none of which were sleeping quarters. Wow. The list of ridiculous extravagancies goes on forever, one standout being a mechanism powered by slaves that rotated the domed building of the grand dining hall as the heavens, while raining rose petals onto Nero's guests below. Holy mother of God. I don't even think Bill Gates has enough money to make that kind of stuff. Holy shit. 
Ah! God damn it! 